the people. Y'all know how we do. We open with a word of prayer. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. We thank you and praise you for another day. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for strengthening our minds and our bodies. We thank you for helping us to overcome. We thank you for giving us the diligence, God, to stay focused, God, on whatever the task is that is before us, God, even if it's a difficult one, even if it's hard, even if it's challenging, even if it's something we've never done before. We thank you, Lord, because you can operate well under those kind of conditions, Jesus. When it's impossible for us, it is possible for you. There is nothing too hard for you, Lord God. And so we thank you that today, Lord Jesus, no matter what we thought yesterday, today we are victorious. Today we are overcomers. Today we are healed. Today we are delivered. Today we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ that loves us. And yes, God, you love us and you care, God. Keep us in the center of your will and in the palm of your hand. And we'll be so careful to keep your name, all the glory, all the honor and praise, God, because it's already yours, Jesus. Thank God. Amen. All right. Shout out to all the people who uh, asked me to make sure I post the prayer on social media, whether you will see it on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. I appreciate you. God bless you. Have a great day. Time for the faith walk of the day. Today, I want to encourage anybody that's going through the healing process, whether it is mental, physical, um, emotional, relational. Um, I want you to understand that healing takes time. It does not happen overnight. You don't just choose to forgive or choose to let go or choose to walk away, choose to be better. And then it's instantaneously fixed. And I love that there are many, many scriptures that talk about um, it being okay. Um, Isaiah 41 and 10 says, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Uh, or maybe Psalms 34 is 18 is what you need to hear this morning. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Uh, or maybe Psalm 73 and 26 is what you need to hear. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is my strength. God is the strength of my heart and the portion and my portion forever. What I want you to understand is that it takes time to first acknowledge that you're in pain. It first takes time to acknowledge that you need help because if you are a working adult, it is very easy to keep going and push, push past your pain and push past what you really need because there's other things that need to be done. And a lot of times we put our emotional and spiritual and natural needs low on the totem pole what because maybe we're taking care of a parent or we have children or we're married or we're in ministry or we have a business, whatever your issue is. Or sometimes it's just easier to ignore it. It's just easier to go, oh, let's just keep going. I just, I want to deal with it. But in the meanwhile, your heart is broken and your heart is dealing with some heavy, heavy stuff. But I want you to know there is... There's medicine for everything that hurts. There's medicine and there's healing for everything that ails you. Do not, do not, do not ignore whatever's going on in your heart. You don't have to work wounded. Even in the military, if somebody is wounded, they don't put wounded soldiers on the front line. Um, I love that at Cali Worship, Warren often says that we don't put wounded soldiers on the front line. If you're going through something, we'll allow you the time to heal. We won't force you to be there and be present and be on. And even though if that's your reality, sometimes maybe you don't have the luxury of taking a moment, make sure that you put your healing process uh, at the top of your to-do list. Make it a priority for your own life to get better mentally, spiritually, physically. Even if you're in a situation, you go, something wrong. I don't really know what it is. I just feel off. Don't ignore that. Don't push past that offness, that uncomfortable, that not really happy, not really sad, kind of blah somewhere in the middle. God wants you to have full and complete joy. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Being confident in Christ it what is what gives you peace. Understanding your purpose and where you're going and how you're going and why you're going in that direction gives you something to lean on, something to depend on, something to trust in. Because if it's just how I feel, I'll stop and quit every time. Trust me, y'all know I'm doing a lot. But if this is all about me and I'm only doing this because I'm trying to push Erica, I would sit down so fast. But it's so much bigger than me. My purpose, my goal, my push is so much bigger than me. It is my kids. It's my legacy. It's my God. It's other souls. It's encouraging people. But even in the midst of all that, God cares about me enough to say, hey, Erica, get some rest. Hey, Erica, recharge. Hey, Erica, restore. Don't keep going when something is broken. Don't ignore the offness, you know. So make sure that you stick with the healing process and make your healing process a priority. All right. That is my faith walk for the day, ladies and gentlemen. Love
mornings. I'm Erica Campbell. Loving Jesus and loving you. It is 29 minutes to the top of the hour on this marvelous mm -hmm. Monday, April the 8th. And uh, time for the Ericaism of the day. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, just a little public PSA for the people. Um, I'm, I'm nice and I'm sweet until I'm not. And um, being angry doesn't mean being mean or coming out of myself or letting somebody control my temperament. I'm never going to let you and your ignorance or whatever it is control my peace because I'm very aware of my peace and my joy and I guard it. Um, so when I encounter somebody with a bad spirit, I'm never going to leave walking away from them going, oh, what did I do? They didn't like me. I'll immediately while I'm talking to them go, what's wrong with you? You know, I know you know people who don't want to admit, no, I'm good. No, you're not. Something's wrong. And if you want to stay in that nothing's wrong, I'm good, I'm going to make a beeline and get away from you as fast as I can because I'm nice until I'm not. You know what I mean? And I won't let anybody play with me, you know, and be inappropriate with me. I won't let anybody uh, come around me bashing people that I love. I won't let anybody come around, you know, with the gossiping and coming around with the little lowbrow. You trying to really play me. And Oh, that was cute, that little thing. I don't, I don't play those games with people. I don't. You know what I mean? But I don't get ignorant. I don't get loud. I don't get belligerent. And I'm not going to post you. I'm not going to subtweet or sub post. I just, I'm fully aware of who you are. And that, you know, just recently in this past little while, I've just been, you know, the Lord has been allowing me to see people and I am grateful for it. You know what I mean? So you just make a mental note of people who's not really for you and not really on your team and not really about you and your husband or your family. And it is fine with me. God bless you. Be well over there though. And I'm not going to waste my energy or my joy on ignorance. This is about as much of what you're getting right now. This is about as much as you get. I'm nice until I'm not. So don't play games. God bless you. But over there, though. But I see you. And I praise God for revealing that to me. I constantly play, pray or reveal the snakes. God, open my eyes. Make me sensitive in the spirit, Lord, when somebody, when their business deal is rooted in evil. Make me fully aware when somebody is smiling, shaking my hand, but they really are very snake-like, you know? I, I really pray. Now, God, now remove them and replace them. And bless them, but over there, though, God. But oh, bless them over there, though. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to play. You don't have to keep people in your life. Well, if they get out of my life, what about? I don't need no snakes to prosper. Not one. And you don't either. You don't need nobody evil that's manipulative. No, nobody that's blatantly living in sin, blatantly, you know, to bring you down. I don't want that in my, I'm not going to invite you into my inner circle. And I know you ain't about Jesus. Get out of here. I don't care how cute you are. I don't care how nice you dance. I don't care how good your song is. Get away from me. I don't play them blames. Not when you know that you're wrong and you foul and you filthy and you're trying to bring that around my life. Get away from me. God bless you. I love you. That is my Erica isn't for the day, ladies and gentlemen. Over there, though. I'm not playing that random. It's not my circus and not my monkeys. Go somewhere else and sit down. I can't do it. The love talk of the day. And I'm just, I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. I love sleep. I love rest. And uh, me and Russ, we have a bad relationship. I don't treat it as good as I should. And so I'm apologizing to sleep. Uh, and uh, I wanted to know that I do love you with all my heart. And I'm going to spend some more time with you. Even today after I get up work, rest. I'm going to embrace you. I'm going to drool with you. I'm going to dream. No, but what I want to talk about is your relationship with rest. And here's what's interesting in the Bible. Rest appears 275 times as opposed to sleep, which only appears 82 times. So sometimes we do say, oh, I'm going to take a nap and I'm going to do this, but we don't rest. We don't settle ourselves. And rest is important to God. It is a part of self-care. It is part of self-love and taking good care of yourself. And so while I'm slightly being funny, like in real life, I really um, do need to embrace rest. You are not going to lose anything by resting. You are not going to miss a, an opportunity. You know, I've heard people say you can sleep when you die. Well, you will die if you don't sleep. And that is a fact. You stay up too long, you push your body, you force your body to not um, recharge, restore, revive. It's the reason God created the sun to go down because we are actually supposed to close our eyes, rest and recharge and refresh. And don't spend your whole, uh, I know some people do these things where they sleep, but they have something next to them that's, you know, kind of trying to teach them while you're asleep. Your brain, when your brain does not rest, you're still not resting. And so you have to learn to have enough self-care, enough self-love 
to really, really rest. I'm talking to y'all, but I'm really talking to me. Rest appears 275 times. Sleep appears 82 times in the Bible. I think rest is really important. I want you to rest today. Rest your mind, rest your heart, rest your spirit, rest your soul. Trust that God is in control, that you will be okay, that everything will be fine, that the world will not fall apart while you're taking a, a nap, some rest, some time to recharge and refresh. You deserve that. Everybody deserves that. Every day, you should take a moment to rest. Just sit and be quiet. Put your phone down. You know, maybe you do play some calming music to help you get there, you know, to help, to help you get to that place of really, really resting. You kind of can't rest without trusting God. You can't rest and be stressed. Those two don't go together. If you don't release it, if you don't let it go, if you don't say some things I can control, some things I can't, and knowing the difference between the two, you will never rest. And I'm talking to myself today. That is my love talk. I love you. And I mean it, y'all. Okay, we'll be back with more on Get Up Mornings.